Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Let's get after it. A major volcano has just exploded in Indonesia, and this is a big deal, guys. It has caused a big mess, uh, tsunami alerts, and the most important thing is that the amount of smoke and ash going into the atmosphere is probably going to influence the weather over the next few weeks and months. Things like this will get up into the atmosphere and hang around. There's been loads of flights canceled. There's been loads of lava and lightning and crazy stuff. I'm about to show you in a second. Take a look at the lightning that's been coming out of this thing. And there's been a lot of videos. Uh, I don't think the tsunami alert ended up being anything dangerous, but the most important thing now is that this is still continuing. Here's the lightning and the lava from last night. And remember, this is still ongoing and this is still potentially influencing the weather again, like I said, over the next couple days and weeks. So just in case you thought the weather wasn't extreme enough, well, now it's probably going to get a little bit more extreme. Things like this, they have consequences. And uh, it's almost like I predicted this. Didn't I say a giant volcano would explode? Well, with a check on that. I think I did. All right, that was some of the coolest video footage I've ever seen of a volcanic eruption. The way that lightning and stuff was firing off constantly looked like some sort of reactor or something. Makes me think about what did the pyramids look like whenever they were being used for energy production? Did they have all this crazy electric, all these crazy electrical flashes and stuff coming off the top of them? Man, that'd be awesome to be able to go back and look at that. Tonight, a News Nation exclusive. The, the teenager who made that 911 call is finally speaking publicly at length and laying out exactly what he saw that night and what has happened since. What do you remember about that night? What do you remember seeing? Oh, um, uh, started dug in, I guess. Um, we were, we were in the backyard fixing a truck and then out of nowhere, we just see a big light fall down and basically crash in the backyard. And, um, moments after, like that's so, like a couple of seconds after, I saw the big giant creature in front of me. The alien, whatever you guys want to call it, the alien demon, whatever you guys want to call it. What do you believe it is? A demon. A demon. Yeah. So maybe that's changed. That once you thought it was an alien, now you believe it was a demon. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know what it is. You know, only God knows what it was. But I'm thinking it's like something bad. You know, it's not a good thing. Was it moving? Was it doing? Yes, it was moving. It was. You could see like. He was breathing like he was like like pissed off. Like he wanted to do something. And he was looking at you and yeah. your brother? He was looking at me, yeah. Did he say anything? Mm-mm. I, I remember he was growling like a dog, like ah, like he was growling. When did it end? Um as soon as I closed my eyes, I guess. I don't know, I think I was praying or something like that, and they just let me go. That's when I went inside and you know, I saw my dad. I, mean, I saw it too. It Everybody felt said, like it had a control of your body? Oh, yeah, I couldn't move. I couldn't move, yeah. You were paralyzed at the sight of this thing. Yeah, I couldn't move. And you were looking at it for 30 or so seconds, and then all of a sudden it was gone? Yeah. That was pretty creepy. A lot of people think that that's just hard to believe. They, you know, like I said again, they can think whatever they want. What do you say to the people who believe that your family just made this whole thing up to try to get attention? They could believe whatever they want, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing it for If I did it for fame, I would be on YouTube and stuff like that, doing more videos, but I don't care, guys. I just went on TikTok and YouTube, made my story. That's pretty much it. I made no money off this. I want people to know that I made no money off this. I don't need money. That's pretty much it. They could believe whatever they want. I bet you hope it doesn't happen to anybody. Oh, no, hopefully not, no. I hope God, no. Really bad experience. Really traumatizing. And Ashley, I don't know uh, what your impression of him was, but when I was speaking to him personally, I was really struck by how confident and authentic he was about his memories of that night. There's a lot of people obviously out there in the world that would make up ghost stories in order to chase any sort of clout or fame. But to me, Angel came across as somebody who truly believed that he saw something that night in that backyard right here behind me. Yeah, Alex, he didn't really seem to have canned answers either. So if this was all a big ruse, he's either a really, really good actor. I mean, Meryl Streep quality. Um, and, you know, he certainly didn't script it, didn't seem to plan out answers, uh, you know, at the grasp. So for any of you who are not familiar with this story, this happened a little while back. These uh, 
these people were just at home. It was nighttime, and there was supposedly a crashed craft in their backyard that they ran out to investigate whenever they heard the sounds and stuff. And many people got it on video as it was going down over Vegas. And and if I'm remembering correctly, they got it on some of their outdoor security camera. They got part of the crash. But then whenever they go outside, they claim that there were these beings that came out that were towering over them, that were threatening in their demeanor. They got interviewed on the news about this, and then it quickly got swept under the rug, and you didn't hear anything else about it. It's interesting, though, to hear that after all this time that he's had to reevaluate and think, rethink the situation and all the details and everything, that he now believes that it wasn't some alien, that it was a demon, even though there was a craft involved. Found that very interesting. And the very first recipe for beer... The very first recipe for beer at the British Museum, that's where it exists, is on a Sumerian tablet. And it says that the great God Anu, you're talking about the Anunnaki and these beings, they gave, they bestowed the recipe for beer onto mankind. And they gave us the recipe on how to brew hops or how to you know, do the hops to make the beer and all that, ferment the hops and all this stuff. It's all on ancient tablets. We didn't invent beer. It was given to us. The knowledge of how to make it was given to mankind. Something you can actually go travel and see that tablet with your own eyes. Crazy stuff. This is why I like this stuff. It's pretty interesting. You know, what we kind of think we know about the ancient past based on what we learned in school is not even close to true reality. And to me, could some of this text be, you know, the, based on the person's own perception who wrote it and etched it? Yeah, of course it is. But I think that the further back you go, the closer you get to real information. You're never going to get 100% of the information because it's people that are making these texts. But when somebody goes through the trouble of using a stylus and a wedge and wet clay and turning it into stone so they can last through the ages, and we're talking about thousands and thousands of years ago, we're getting as close as we can, as close as we could possibly get to the actual facts. My understanding is that that cuneiform or cuneiform, however you pronounce it, is the oldest written language there is. So no one's going to lay claim to being the inventor of beer. <laughs> hey, if you like this video and you enjoy this kind of content, I make a new one just like it every other day. It'd be awesome if you'd hit that subscribe button and come back to join me. When I went to Angkor Wat, the largest temple complex in the world located in Cambodia. Now look at that moat. This moat, which goes around Angkor Wat, more mass of mud removed to create that moat around Angkor Wat than the Great Pyramid okay. by multitudes. The moat isn't natural? No, it's man-made. If what? Shovels? <laughs> It would just be hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people. Yeah. So you don't start a project like this until you already know it's going to work. You're talking about calculus, geology, excavation techniques. This is how many years ago? We're talking about something, in my opinion, super ancient. This thing could be 20, 30,000 years old. This thing is littered with hieroglyphs. Is there any cool stuff in the hieroglyphs? Well, there you go right there, the dinosaur. The what? See that? Oh, yeah. shit. This, to me, is more proof than most things that we are working with advanced knowledge, at, le at the very least. He makes a very valid point here. If you didn't know 100% that that thing was going to work, you wouldn't put all those man hours and stuff into building this thing just on a whim, just on a, the hopes that it was going to function properly. You would have to know if you're going to invest that sort of time and effort and energy into building something like that you would have to know for a fact that it was going to function and with that being the only site that looks like that as far as i know there's not a bunch of these things it's not like these were built and they failed and over time they figured out how to do it this to me is a huge piece of evidence showing that someone or something gave them information to help them build this. The internet doesn't even exist. This video you're watching right now isn't real. The people you're interacting with in the comments don't exist. The people that like your videos, watch your videos, are all fake. Dead internet theory is real, and here is the proof. Dead internet theory is the theory that the internet is not even real anymore. Yes, it did used to be. Everybody that you interact with on social media did used to be real. It used to be a genuine thing. But it died, completely died, back in 2017 or 2018. Meaning everything you see now, everybody you interact with, is fake. So what actually does this mean? 
So let's use Facebook as a key example right now because there's nut stuff going on right there. There are these weird AI generated images going completely viral for no reason. Now if you look at these photos, as I say, getting loads of views, loads of likes, there's all strange people in the comments, which there is no way these people are real. Like the comments, the things people are saying are just completely random, nothing to do with what is actually going on in the photo or video. Like you've got Taylor Swift riding on a tortoise, like what's going on? Why would somebody comment, oh my God, amen. Makes no flipping sense, right? So we know all these posts are just general AI, but so are the people seeing it. So there is of course millions and millions of users on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all the social Social platforms, so there's actually not. You see, the dead internet theory suggests that these are actually all bots. And now, yes, of course, there is still people on social media, but nowhere near the amounts we're being told. Billions of users on TikTok, really? Random videos blowing up, sometimes you'll get loads of likes, loads of views, but people don't really comment all the time. That's because these people aren't actually real. Do you remember the .io games? You've got Slither.io and all of these games where you'd play against people online. Now these games you'd play against people on your phone or on your device, it'd be like you're playing against real people, right? Because you were, you could interact, you could chat with them or whatever. But no, it's actually official that .io games, you weren't ever playing against anyone unless it was local multiplayer. And it went so far, they wanted you to believe so badly that you were playing against online real people, that, you know, if you went on aeroplane mode or your Wi-Fi went off, it would go, oh, searching for connection, we can't play, there's no connection. But they weren't real. We know that was all bots. So why couldn't you play it offline? Because they wanted us to believe that. So what if the big companies, all of these mobile app companies, technology companies, they want us to think there's billions of people on the platforms interacting with our stuff, making us go viral, but it's not really happening. So half the people that probably watch this video won't even be real. Half the people of videos you interact with might not be real. There are millions and millions and billions of bots creating accounts, creating content all over the platforms. These faceless channels, there might not be anyone behind them. So that's why. So I like the uh, dead internet theory and there's absolutely some truth to it, but it's not completely dead yet. And I know that to be a fact because I'm a real person and I'm uploading videos and I believe that my audience is real because bots can't send me customizable Funko Pops and USB thumb drives with 12 years of research on it. So, but there's absolutely some truth to it. There's a lot of bots out there and a lot of supposedly viral content is just being pushed by the algorithms fed with views and comments and stuff from these bots just to push a narrative to get the videos out there that they want you to see. And thanks everybody, I'm Wendy Bell. You know, it's stunning to monitor the media's lack of interest in the whole Maui story. I've been in this business for 30 years. I'm stunned, but I'm not surprised. The dots are connecting. And coincidence seems to be the story here, right? But the true story, the media knows it is not allowed to tell. But I can. Is it a coincidence that the Maui police chief is the same man who was in charge in Las Vegas during that massacre that killed 58 people? Is it a coincidence that the Maui property, owned by million and billionaires, it wasn't touched by the flames while homes of the locals all burned? Was it a coincidence that the flames traveled across hundreds of feet of pavement and crossed a four-lane highway with emergency shoulders to jump into the ocean and then burn all the boats? Was it a coincidence that the largest system of outdoor emergency sirens in the world never made a sound as the fire devoured Lahaina? Was it a coincidence that at the same time, very same time, all the water was turned off? Was it a coincidence that police were ordered to block off streets and to funnel all the cars trying to escape onto one road where that firestorm incinerated entire families? How about the coincidence that the governor of, of Hawaii, Josh Green, just weeks before that inferno, signed a pledge to the UN's 2030 Agenda of Sustainable Development, pledging to eliminate emissions. Weird. And think about this coincidence. That governor also signed an emergency proclamation on July 17th, three weeks before the fire, about housing of all things, and suspended seven state statutes protecting historic preservation laws, removing all of the red tape when it comes to building infrastructure. Coincidentally, the coincidence that the government put up a black fence around Lahaina or that the FAA grounded all drones from flying over the affected areas? Is it a coincidence that since at least 2011, there have been plans to make Maui the first smart city run by 100% renewable energy? And that coincidentally, two of the three largest landowners on Maui are BlackRock and the U.S. government, and that both are part of the U.N.'s agenda? It must be a coincidence then that the locals whose homes did not burn are now being evicted from their property. And of course, a total coincidence that all the fact checkers who are checking these facts, who say everything I just told you is just a coincidence, are also owned and run by BlackRock. 
Thank goodness none of these coincidences is connected. I'm Wendy Bell. I'll see you next time for more Common Sense. We all know it's so obvious. We all know something screwy was going on with that and still is. But it's just been swept under the rug. There's no more reporting on it. There's there's no new information coming out. There's no one helping these people. So I feel like because of that, we need to keep, you know, somebody's got to keep bringing this up and keep it at the forefront of everyone's attention because otherwise nothing's going to be done about it and these people aren't going to get any help. Conspiracy time. I believe that some very heavily guarded secrets are located inside state and national parks. Hear me out. So I'm a supervisor at a state park. I have keys to almost every building. I have access code to almost every gate. I have access to places in the park that staff aren't allowed to go, and I have access to the park where general public is not allowed to go. You cannot fly drones over top this park, as well as many other parks. There is a very heavy undercover presence here, and I know that for a fact. There has been numerous times where large portions of the park were shut down due to archaeological reasons, and there has been numerous instances where certain parking lots were completely shut down and filled with National Guard and military vehicles. There are animals back here that are not supposed to be here. Like last year, I actually saw a lemur in the state park in Florida. There are reports of exotic animals that are not supposed to be here. When they're reported to us, we are told to tell them that it's because there is exotic breeders just outside the park and sometimes those animals get out. Is that true? I don't know. Going down the rabbit hole in the state parks and out in the, the wilderness, there have been reports of staircases. Just random staircases out in the forest. Yeah, staircases. Leading to nowhere. Look it up. So yeah, I believe that there's things being hidden back here that they don't want us to know about. What are your thoughts? So if you follow the Can-Am project, Missing 411 with David Pilatus, you'll know that there are a lot of anomalies and things that happen around disappearances in the national parks. Just like that Lahaina video that we just watched, it's coincidence after coincidence that you see these same things appearing in each disappearance. So each story has these same coincidences in it. In my opinion, there is definitely something that we don't know about that's taking place inside of our national parks. And I think the government's aware of it to a degree, like a, you know, a certain level high up, I think they're aware of it. I think whatever's causing all these strange disappearances and stuff, they know what's going on and just aren't letting us know. I don't have any theories on what it is. I don't know if it's Bigfoot, demons, aliens, a gang of wilderness survivalist serial killers. I don't know. I don't really have a theory on it, but something strange is going on in our national parks that there's absolutely some truth to that. I'm not a religious person, but don't you guys find it weird that Christianity and believing in God is like the taboo or weird thing to do? People can mock Christianity, but God forbid someone attacks like the Muslim religion and everyone will freak out. Even when I see celebrities clearly worshiping, like seeing, and I point it out, and people are just like, oh, it's just art, or oh, it's just a cheap way to get views. Worshiping Satan is? Call me crazy, but no matter what religion you are, even if you're atheist, worshiping Satan, I'm not sure why that's on the top of its fine list. For some reason, there's a huge stigma between Christianity and worshiping God that people just immediately associate them with like being racist or something crazy. Don't you find it odd that Hollywood or the music industry has no really positive references to God or Christianity? There is blatant Satanism in music videos and every time someone tries to point it out, they're looked at like they're crazy. Even people in Hollywood, when they spoke out about Satanism in videos, they're looked at like they're crazy by the media. Don't you find that a little suspicious? There's absolutely persecution, open persecution of Christianity and Christians, and it hasn't always been like this. I can say within the last 10 to 15 years, you've seen a switch where it used to be if you were a Christian, you were looked at as a good person who had values and morals and you were more trustworthy because you were a Christian. And now you're looked down on if you are if you have Christian values. There's absolutely a switch happening, and I think that it's because there's so much open Satanism. There's an agenda. Something's be this stuff is being pushed. This is not happening naturally, and it's working. It's becoming taboo to be a Christian. Project Bluebeam, by far the scariest years we may see.
This conspiracy achieved its status in 1994 by a book that was written by Serge Monast. In the book, the writer describes how the United Nations, in collaboration with NASA's technology, will unite the whole world under a new false religion. But how? There will be, supposedly, an alien invasion, which is all part of the whole show, of course. And one day, a hero, a god, will come from the skies and destroy these aliens. And us, human beings, we will not believe our own eyes and start to worship this god. Whatever this god orders will happen. One world order. This is called the Project Bluebeam. Now, I don't believe that they have the technology that is capable of deceiving us yet. But in the near future, they might very well be able to make them. If you are a Muslim or a Christian, this whole show must ring a bell. This is the person we have been warned about more than a thousand years ago. If this happens, this is the Dajjal, the Antichrist. Be prepared. I think they do have the technology already, and I think that they've been using it in some of these UFO sightings, like the ones that look like angels and stuff, I think is potentially them testing out their equipment. Some of the stuff that we get videos of looks nonsensical. It doesn't make any sense why the movements that it's making are happening. It, it looks organic. It looks like it's some creature or something floating in the air, you know, changing shape and it just totally looks like a projection. It looks like some sort of a light projected beam or something that they're just playing with. So that makes me wonder, are they just toying around with this Project Blue Beam equipment and testing it out so that they can check and see, are people going to believe what they're videoing in the sky? Are they going to see it as a real anomaly? Or are they going to see that as some sort of an alien entity? I see an insane amount of manifesting content on this app and you're not manifesting correctly or you're not doing it with all the ingredients. So like and save this so that you can watch it in the future to remind yourself. But manifesting is so much more than just using your God-given creative power and abilities to make the future happen that you want. If you're just thinking about becoming a millionaire or buying a mansion or whatever, that's just positive thinking. Now, there's a lot of benefits to positive thinking. You should definitely do it, but that's not enough to manifest the future that you want. You need to enact the power of momentum, okay? So Nikola Tesla talks about if you understand the power of 369, you unlock the mysteries of the universe. Another mystery of the universe is you can see these Fibonacci spirals everywhere. These spirals will teach you so much about momentum. Let me give you an example. So a couple years back, I was completely depressed. I was in the worst position of my life, like thinking about, you know what? I was running a tech company, it raised millions of dollars, my portfolio was worth millions, and I was so unhappy because I didn't have a purpose that was fulfilling. Meditation and breath work and plant medicine completely changed my life. One of the hacks that I was doing after that is mal taping at night. It's insane, completely changed my mental health, completely changed the restfulness when I wake up, you know, my facial structure, the quality of my sleep, so many benefits. And so one day I was doing a meditation saying like, I want to spend the rest of my life focusing on, focusing on something that I care about, okay? And I was thinking about this mouth tape and I was like, you know what? We can build a cool brand around this. We can make it more affordable. We can do all these cool things. Well, we just got a product a week ago. And if I was just sitting there this entire time as I'm manifesting what this brand can become, thinking like this is gonna become a $10 million company while doing nothing, nothing's going to happen, okay? Nothing's going to happen. We haven't even sold a single box. So once we got it, it was like, okay, how do we get this listed on TikTok shop and how do we sell one? Once we sold one, it's like, how do we sell two a day? Once we are selling two a day, it's how do we sell four a day? The last four days, we've been selling around 15 plus per day, okay? That's a big jump. So now all of my manifestations, that power, that thought energy is going into, how do I get this to 30 units a day? What do I need to do? How many videos do I need to make? How do I get this in front of the right people? The focus is always A to B, B to C, C to D, so on and so forth, and eventually you'll get to Z. You need to build momentum. Just like that Fibonacci spiral, the more momentum you build, you get to that destination at the end.
The reason why I'm making this is I want you guys to feel fulfilled. I want you building the life that you want to build. I want everybody to be happy. But if you're just manifesting or if you can just see the happiness, just understand that that is step one. Step two is breaking that into bite-sized milestones and figuring out what you need to do because manifesting is just going to get you the opportunities in your life. It is up to you to take advantage of those opportunities and make them happen. So build out those milestones, focus on taking them one down, one at a time, you will build momentum and it is insane how soon you'll see success. All right, there's a very good reason that I put this in here. For one, I always end my videos on a really sour note <laughs> and I didn't wanna do that this time. So uh, I wanted to end on a positive note and say to all the many, many people who have left comments asking me about creating a YouTube channel. When I started this, I started it because I wanted to watch the videos that I'm making and I couldn't find them. Not in the style that I wanted to watch them in. So I decided to make them myself. And fortunately, luckily for me, you guys were out there waiting for this kind of content. And so I had an audience that was waiting on me. All of you have an audience that's waiting on you, but you've got to put the content out in order to actually find them. Pay attention to this. This is 100% the best advice you're going to get when it comes to starting a YouTube channel or doing anything that you are passionate about. If you don't take those first steps and actually make the movement happen, it's never going to come to fruition. But guys, that's the end of our clips. I'm going to go ahead and stop right there, but I do have a couple packages to open, so wait right there. This first package comes with a note that says, Barry, I appreciate that you bring joy to so many people. I believe you to be a great human being. Please enjoy some art, one from my last series and one just for you and your family. You may display them anywhere you'd like, on or off screen. Really just wanted to show you my appreciation to you and yours. All the best, Chris. Then he leaves his contact information and it says, P.S. I also do lots of music production. Would love to help in any way I can for your podcast or your channel. Thank you, Chris. Let's see what Chris sent. First, we have some very awesome personalized wall art with my family's name on it man that looks really good on screen this is awesome thank you so much this is definitely going to go probably right here on the wall that would look awesome and secondly check this out that is awesome I actually paint a little bit from time to time using acrylics and I've tried this technique. I've seen this before in other paintings and I've tried this technique and I cannot pull it off. I've always wanted something like this because I've tried, I've tried to paint it myself multiple times to get this effect and was not successful. So thank you. This is awesome. And the second thing I got came in a huge box. <laughs> Uh, this is from, I cannot see who this is from. I'm not seeing a name anywhere on this box. So I'm going to open it and see if there's a note. All right, I'm not sure what to do here. Um, so the only thing in the box were instructions on how to hang this thing up. And this, I don't know what this is. I have no idea. <laughs> it's cool looking. Um, and it looks like it's got clouds or something on it. Whenever you look. This is the back side. You can see there's like clouds. It looks really neat when there's light going through it. Um, I'm not sure what this is, but it mounts on the wall and you can put spacers behind it. So I may put some LED lights behind this so that those clouds show up whenever you shine lights through it and mount that sucker on the wall. I don't know who sent that to me. There's no note, there's no name on the box. So unfortunately I can't can't give this person a shout out but um reach out to me in the discord and let me know who you are that sent this and let me know what this is <laughs> so that i don't misuse it or mess it up guys that's the end of our video today i hope everyone enjoyed the videos that we watched together i hope everybody will come back and join me in the next one i hope everybody has a great safe fantastic rest of your day and i'll see you in the next video